Hey guys, it is my first video in front of my new background. If you guys have not seen the video where I styled this background, brought you with me, I went to Target, Home Depot, I painted this wall, we styled everything out. I'm gonna have it linked up here if you guys wanna watch it. It was really fun and your guys' comments underneath that video were so supportive and kind and wonderful. I didn't read one negative comment, which is pretty rare. Usually there's at least one. I did not see a singular one. So wow, thank you all so much. It was a really invigorating comment section to get me ready for 2022 videos. And so I am here today filming a video. I've got this new top on, which I got specifically specifically for overalls. You guys know I really love overalls. I wear them all the time, like literally constantly. I'm just loving it. It's exactly how I hoped it would look. I'll be talking about it more in an upcoming video. But anyway, I just love it so much. I think this is such a cute top and I'm so happy with the way that it looks. <laughs> I love the new background so much and you guys seem to be digging it too. I am eating pita chips and hummus. So you may see it in my teeth and you may hear a crunch here and there. I have a bit of a headache today. By headache, I mean cluster headache. I'm just hoping that as the day goes on and as I sit here and eat this, it starts to like dissipate a little bit, but it does feel like it's gonna be a, I have to take a pill kind of day. And I'm not really happy about that, but. So I actually don't even have my makeup like organized or sitting out. I cleaned up my desk and I just have like all the crap that was sitting up on my desk. My husband just texted me, he's so cute. He's down there hanging out with our kiddo while I film. Yes, he is so cute. He's in the cutest stage of life right now. Like, let me just even go there. Cutest stages ever. Like, I, I know that toddlerhood is gonna be a trip, but so far, <laughs> It is so fun. I am literally loving how he's just, we can communicate with him now. It's like a totally different relationship that we have with him because he's there. He's right there. He understands what we're saying. We understand what he's trying to tell us. And it's so much fun. I cannot even describe. So as far as makeup is concerned, like I was saying, I don't have any things set out over here. I just kind of have everything jammed in here. So I'm gonna have to be digging around, but I'm gonna do a pretty light base today. I'm really not digging like a super thick base anymore. It just feels so much nicer. Like my skin is doing pretty good. I just have a little blemish right here and a little bit of discoloration where I cannot stop picking my face. But other than that, my skin's looking pretty good. So I don't want to like overly cover it, you know? Such a pet peeve of mine. I think it was like Robert Welsh or it might've been James Welsh. One of the two the other day was talking on Twitter and they were talking about like, what are your like pet peeves? I can't remember what the question was. I think the question was posed in like regards to Instagram videos or like social media. And I said, it's so friggin' annoying to me when somebody with really nice skin, I'm not using myself as an example here, but when somebody with really nice skin goes on to use like 15 different pumps of different foundations and like slathers their face in it. And then the end result is like this gorgeous, flawless, filtered video like you know their skin looks like absolute dog shit in real life just like cakey and all the lines you just know it does because there's no humanly possible way you can use that much product and have it look how the end result does without filtering the shit out of it that annoys me so bad i'm gonna take like that much of foundation and this is the pure foreign one as always and i am just going to uh, i think i picked too dark of a shade but i use the it cosmetics love as a foundation brush and just like buff this shit in. Yeah, it's too dark, so it's it's not gonna... Let me lighten it up a little bit if I can find one. Okay, I'll use a little MN3 from LYS. There we go. Just to lighten the beat. Oh, damn. Just when, it's, when it's darker than your skin like this, you can't really get away with doing as light of a layer because then you have like patches of like slightly darker. Bring it down a little bit. But man, I am loving, loving toddler life <laughs> compared to baby. Because you know what? With my kiddo, I don't know if all kids are like this. I know they're not. I know every kid has a totally different temperament and it's just like different for everyone. But it felt from day one, he was frustrated in his baby body. He needed to be able to do more and that he couldn't. And so a lot of life just seemed really frustrating for him. Like just as this tiny little baby, he just seemed frustrated all the time. But I've noticed that so far since he's getting older and he's able to do things like crawl around everywhere. He's so close to walking. It's like nuts. He's able to crawl around. He's able to pull himself up to things he use. We have like, I got him a shopping cart for Christmas. That's what our physical therapist recommended. We see a physical therapist with him because he had like a foot issue. She recommended instead of getting like those push walkers to get a shopping cart because she was like, they are, they can fill them with things. They, they kind of grow with your kid as your kid grows because you know, kids love to walk around with like a little shopping cart and do errands and do like big people things. And she recommended we do that and we got him one and he walks on that thing all around the house. It is so freaking cute. Just like he is able to communicate with us. He can say certain words. He can ask for food when he's hungry. He asks for water when he's thirsty. Just like this little person. And it's just a delight to be a part of watching him go from this 
nothing, you know, just this little baby who lays there and cries for what he needs to being able to ask for things. Like he can ask for a banana, avocado, for, he says apple, apple. He doesn't call oranges oranges, he calls them a ball because they're like a shape of a ball. But he points at everything and tells us what he wants and then we can like just give it to him and it's so wonderful and he's much happier for it. He asks every morning for the speaker. He says, a pee, a pee and he wants uh, the speaker and he wants to listen to music. That's what he's telling us. Like, can we please listen to music? And the answer is absolutely freaking yes. So that's really fun having a kid that this is this age. I've heard that it gets harder. I will say, um, I'm not speaking to specifics on anything right now because I don't make claims about parenthood anymore, okay? I don't do it because right when you say something, everything changes and you'll be like, my kid eats perfectly and then they get really, really picky or you're like, my kid has never done this and then the next day they do it. So I'm not making comments like that anymore because it jinxes anything, it jinxes it all. I will say one thing though. And that is that I listened to a podcast that was recommended. It was from Happy as a Mother. I don't know if you guys have heard of that podcast, but it's a podcast that talks about all kinds of things that like are considered taboo and parenting and stuff like that. And then she breaks it down and talks about how these things are just actually incredibly normal and most people experience them and just kind of normalizing a lot of the things that people go through. You can find it on Spotify and stuff like that. It's called Happy as a Mother. But she had a guest on who I had actually heard of before and her name is Janet Lansbury. And Janet Lansbury is basically like all around touting the methods of Magda Gerber, who is the inventor or discoverer, what's the word, pioneer of the Rye parenting method. Now, I don't follow a specific parenting method. Like you'll see a lot of people online that follow gentle parenting. I would say I fall a lot more into the gentle parenting side of things than I do. I, I would say it's gentle parenting what I do. I think that gentle parenting a lot of times can have a really negative connotation for a lot of people because they feel like you are letting your child walk all over you and you're not like setting boundaries. That's really not what gentle parenting is at all. It's, it's like talking to your children with respect because they're a human being versus being authoritarian. And you're not letting your child just rule the roost you're kindly and respectfully setting boundaries. That's how I interpret gentle parenting. That's sort of what the same level of like what um, Janet Lansbury and Mag Magda Gerber, that whole thing, is that you are a calm, confident leader. And that's kind of the whole point is that you are not letting emotions and tantrums and outbursts and stuff like that rule your life in the way because you just understand that they're a normal part of development, but also that a lot of it is connection seeking for children. My kid is down there singing Frozen. We've never let him watch it before. We've never, well, it's not that we've never let him watch it. We've never watched it before. We don't tend to watch a lot of movies and stuff like that. We're trying to limit it if we can, just, you know, what we feel comfortable with and stuff, you know, because we were kind of given free reign for movies and TV and stuff like that as kids. And we just want to, I don't know, there's no, there's nothing weird about it. We do like a balance, you know, he's watching Frozen right now with him down there. And he said he's singing. So cute. But anyway, when I was listening to this podcast, about gentle parenting, but it's called like the Rye Parenting Method and it's Janet Lansbury talking about it. I will link the podcast down below, by the way. She talks about treating children with respect, like recognizing that they're not just children, they're not just babies, they are human beings and they're people who are gonna grow up. And so talking to them kind of the way that you would wanna be talked to and, and treating them with the same respect that you would ask to be treated with. And I see this all the time, like on TikTok and stuff like that. There's a lot of parents who do like gentle parenting and respectful parenting content. Sorry, I'm just over here freaking searching for shit. I don't know where anything is. I listened to that podcast and like, obviously I already knew like you are kind and respectful to your children, but I guess I, I started framing it in a different way in my head after I listened to it in the way that like before, like if he was getting into something, I'd be like, no, 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 no. We don't touch that. And I would like say it like that. Now I get down on his level because I've seen that a lot where you get down on their level and talk to them just like you would want to be talked to. And I explained to him why. So now instead I'll be like, oh no, no, careful. That's hot. We don't want to touch that because we don't want to burn ourselves. Instead of just being like, no, no, stop. No, no, no. I did. I, I already told you not to touch that. You know what I mean? Like where I would kind of default to that before. And that's like a totally, I feel like pretty normal thing. It's not like bad. It's just more like a different approach. And not only does he listen so much better now, he generally seems like way more settled and happy and more just calm and less whiny. And now I notice if I say something to him, I, I this is kind of how we do it now, is if he starts kind of getting loud and like you really want something and I'm clearly not understanding what he wants as I get down on his level and I say, hey, hey, what do you need? 
and he will usually point at something and tell me. And what I've noticed is when I diffuse it with like a, what do you need, what do you need? And then I figure that out. It's usually like, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry. I want, want you to read me this book. Like he'll hand me a book and say more, more, more. And usually it's something like that. And I've just noticed that it's almost always like he wants more connection with me. I'm always there, but I may be doing something. Like I might be doing the dishes or I might be on my phone or something, but there's usually always something. And I don't know, man, I just feel like this changed the game for me because I don't like saying no all day long. Like, I don't like it. I don't like being like, no, 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 don't get it. No, what if I already told you? No, we don't touch the cat, you know? And I say, no, thank you. When he's touching something, I explain why now. And I also implemented, I talked about this in a recent video, but I implemented the whole yes area thing where instead of having things in his direct reach that I constantly have to say no to him about, everything that he can reach and get to now is like a yes area. So I baby gated off our entire kitchen and his like play area and our like family room area and everything in there is baby proofed to where if he gets into the cabinets like there's nothing he could get into that's going to harm him and any cabinet that could harm him is like locked with these little magnetic locks so he doesn't have to be told no all day long i don't have to say no all day long it's almost like teamwork and a collaborative effort instead of like a power struggle and you know as things get older and as he grows i am sure a lot of this will change and it won't be as easy but right now it's just been wonderful <laughs> i'm so happy with it he seems much more happy and settled and there's just less of a power struggle now and more of us getting along and not that we weren't getting along before obviously he's a little baby but I don't know it just seems like it's working better for both of us and I would really highly recommend listening to the Rye Parenting Method. Janet Lansbury also has a podcast and it's called Unruffled and they're very very short episodes and it's about how to like have just more harmony in the household and you know how to navigate certain situations in a way that works well for you to be a calm confident leader instead of feeling like you're out of control and don't know what to do in regards to having a toddler or a baby. And it sort of like puts the power back in your hands as you know, children want a leader, but they want somebody to respect them in the meantime. It's just really, really like useful information. And I felt really, good listening to it and since implementing a lot of it i just feel like overall way more calm and confident that's a really good way to describe it anyway we don't have to keep talking about parenting stuff i know a lot of you guys that watch this aren't currently parents and so I, it, it's like doesn't really apply to a lot of people who watch and i don't want to like make it seem like i'm that's like all i'm talking about it's just currently like what's going on and i just find it so fascinating that there are so many different methods and ways to do things and that's the thing is there's no really one wrong or right way just whatever works best for you as a parent and I just find that that so far has been and made a huge change for me and not feeling like authoritarian in any way and feeling like we're just a little team. I am at the end of the day, the leader, both Zach and I are, we are the leaders in the household. And you know, we ultimately have to say no to certain things because they are dangerous or it's just what's not what's best for him. But if we do it calmly, confidently and respectfully and without, a, there's no fight because it's not a negotiable, but we're not being like, no, you can't. You know, it's just more like, oh no, that's not what we do right now. This is what we're having for dinner. This is what's on the menu. That's that. There is no fight because we're respectfully letting you know that this is what we're having for dinner and this is what we're playing with. And actually we can't play with that right now because it's hot and it's dangerous. And I don't know, man, I feel like when I explain it in a really calm way to him, he doesn't fight me on it versus I'm like, no, he's like, no, I want it. You know what I mean? But now it's just kind of like, well, okay. Mom said no, so. But like, anyway, I'm not claiming to know anything really. I don't know anything. I'm just testing new things every single day, but. This seems to be working really well for us, so I'm sticking to it. So today I wanted to just put on a quick face of makeup because it makes me feel really good and put together for the day. There's really no reason other than I like to feel well put together. It's something that when I do get a full face of makeup on and I do just kind of prepare for the day, it makes everything else feel like it falls into place better. I saw that on a TikTok one time too. This gal was talking about how every morning she wakes up and puts makeup on and I was like, dude, I could not imagine doing it every morning, but she said it just makes her feel like anything that comes her way that day she can handle and I was like you know what I actually do agree with that so here I am not every day I'll tell you that much but this is like the really easy face of makeup that I do this is my everyday style makeup now I remember thinking back in the day how do people not wear lashes like why would somebody not wear lashes it only takes like 10 minutes to put them on in the morning and they make you feel so much more put together as if I'm gonna put lashes on every day now are you absolutely kidding me no 
No, no, no. Can't even imagine. I like wearing them. I think I feel good when I wear them, but absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm conflicted because I remember back in the day, Manny MUA did a video on trying out Lashify. And I remember the owner's response to Manny being really shitty. Like, I don't know if you guys remember that. That was like way back in the day. And I remember he didn't like the product. It didn't work well for him. You know, everyone has a different preference on what they like when it comes to makeup. And I remember the owner going on her Instagram and making really degrading comments and stuff like that. And I see Lashify literally everywhere now. And it looks like such a good system. Like just like, it's like gossamer lashes. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but like essentially you use like this mascara e glue stuff and then you stick the lashes underneath, you stick them together. And I think they last like a week or two. They're almost like at home false lashes or no, they're like almost like at home lash extensions. But I don't know. I don't want to support a company like that if they're really shitty. And the owner made some like really, really awful comments. And so I don't want to support that. Like she was really shitty to Manny and Manny is such a nice person. Like Manny's literally so nice. I don't know if you guys have ever met him, but he's fucking so nice. Like actually a very kind human being. So yeah, I don't know if an apology was ever issued or anything like that. I don't know if you guys know of a rival company that, that like is similar, but man, Lashify has a lot of really, really big followers now. And like, I think they have almost like a million followers on Instagram. So they're like doing well as a company. I just wanted to try something like that so I could like wake up in the morning with lashes done. And I don't want to go get my lashes done because that was a pain in my ass and they all just fell out. And I don't know, I just don't feel like committing in that regard. I'm not trying to like be shitty or make waves or anything like that, but I don't know. That's what I remember of the brand. But I've seen so many people trying them. I saw, I think it was like a video of Bryce Dallas Howard trying them and like they looked really good. And I saw other celebrities and people using them and I just wanted to try something like that, but not support a company that, you know, does shitty stuff like that. So if you guys know of anything that's similar, let me know. Look at my lips, look. Awful. Let me try a little Charlotte Tilbury. Mm. Cakey. I'm gonna put on a little Auric Glow Less and Selenite. I knew my face was missing something, but I didn't know what it was. I need a little highlighter. I can hear Frozen down there. I haven't watched that movie in years. It was so everywhere all the time that I was like, if I hear Let It Go one more damn time, I will fucking let it go on some of these bitches. Let it go on you hoes. That's what it needed. That's what my face needed. I use so little of this product now. I use so little of everything. I just like the feeling of not having a lot of product on my face. And I realized that over the years, I've just been way overdoing it on the amount of product that I was putting on my face. I think that's just the nature of YouTube is that you see people caking it on. So you're like, well, I need to cake it on. You really don't. The amount of product that it takes to actually cover is pretty minimal. I mean, at least for me right now, like in the realm of using the Pure Cosmetics 4-in-1, Love Your Selfie Foundation, which is still my favorite foundation like to this day. You just barely need any. I'm putting a little down my neck because the color match was not good since I used too dark of a shade, but look how little of it I needed. Just, you know, I think maybe I used a half a pump and it just looks amazing. And I didn't even use concealer today. I certainly could have, but I just used the product as concealer. I don't know. I just feel like it's uh, working so much nicer for me to have such a light base. Maybe I'll take a little bit of a shade. I'm going to go in actually with my pure X Robbie D Christie palette and I'm going to go in with the shade My Whole Heart. I I haven't used this in a really long time on camera. It just, timing wise, everything ended up not working out great in regards to tutorials and stuff like that because I just, I can't even explain. All the timelines got pushed. This was back in 2020 because of COVID and everything ended up not working out like I wanted it to. Things were just so back to back. And man, I wish that time wise things would have been different because I wanted to put out so many different tutorials. And I know you think like you still can. I just feel like it's been over a year since this launch you know, a year and a half ago now. And I found out I was pregnant like right when this was launching. Ooh, I like that, that like lightness on my lid. I'm gonna take a little bit of Moo Point as well, just a little bit into my crease, like a tad, like that much, just to deepen that part. This is the Makeup by Mario F3. It is not an eye brush, but I'm using it like one. Just wanted something really big and fluffy. I think this is good for highlighter. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of that My Whole Heart shade and like bring it a little bit in and under just to brighten up. Hmm, I kinda love that. Looks nice. I'm gonna take a little bit of this Melt stack. I just want a little bit more bronze on my face, not a ton. 
I'm really glad you guys liked the video making this background. I am loving it so much. It's inspiring me so much to just want to sit down and film and the room feels so much larger because I turned sideways. So it's like long instead of this like short narrow room where the back wall was this way. Now the back wall is this way. It's just so much nicer of a setup for me. Like it's absolutely lovely to film in now because I have so much space. I still need to clean it and go through my makeup and declutter. I just wanted to sit down and do the makeup first. So I think today I'm actually gonna film some of the declutter stuff if you guys are interested in that. I've already done a ton of it and not filmed it. Like the stuff that I was doing prior where I donated the makeup and I posted that video, I, I'll post it up here. I was mostly talking about mental health, but I talk about the makeup in that video as well. And I did a lot of it without showing it on YouTube. So I've already decluttered a ton, but there's just, I mean, there's more makeup in here than 10 people could use. And I think that it would all go to a much better place. So I'm really excited to get to do that and go through all this makeup and get everything really organized and labeled. I wanna get a label maker. I need to order one right now. Oh, I need to get gold, golden ticket. Just the tiniest little bit of golden ticket. Ooh, just loving minimal makeup and stuff like that lately. I'm loving minimal everything. And just with my house, I just have this biggest desire to go through and really make each room and space into something magical and really representative of us. Like I'm painting, I told you guys, I'm painting a mural in my son's room. And so far I've painted the walls green, the ceiling blue. And then today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of that blue and green paint, kind of mix it. And then I'm going to like feather it down on the walls. And then once that's done, I then am going to paint a big mural all over the entire room. And I think the vibe that I'm going for is like a big moon, a really big bright moon and trees and a ton of mushrooms growing out of stumps and out of the tree limbs and throwing out of the wall so that there's tons of mushrooms everywhere. And I wanna have snails on top of mushrooms and little mice touching noses and like owls and other critters around the room. I don't know, I just wanna have lots of different things and bugs and, and all these different kinds of animals in the room so that he can learn and see and he's really interested. Like we have this book right now. It is called Hello Farm, I think is what it's called. It's one of those books where kids can't rip them. They're called like Chew Proof or something like that. Anyway, he loves that book. He loves talking about the animals but also we have one called Creep Crawl. It's one of those same books as well. And it's got grasshopper, centipede, spider, snail, slug, worm, snake. It's got all these different bugs in it. And he loves looking at that and learning about bugs. So he asked to read that book like literally 50 times a day. There's not even words. It's just me pointing at objects, but he absolutely loves it. And so I want to put that in his bedroom. And then what we're gonna do is my husband bought me a rug making kit, not even a kit, but like cut pile rug gun. I don't know if you've seen these and like the rug fabric. I'm gonna make him a big moss rug with like a little stream going through it for his bedroom. And then I am gonna put like a floor bed in there or maybe his crib with like the side taken off. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it because he doesn't sleep in the crib. And then I got this like hanging, not linen. I can't remember what the fabric is, but I got this like hanging thing that goes in the corner of his room. It's really, really cute. I got it from Etsy before he was born. And then he never ended up sleeping in his crib really. I mean, he, we tried, but it just didn't work out. But and I'm gonna put that in there and it's like this really gorgeous mustard color. And I'm gonna just paint all of these really, really cool things in the room and make it like a really, really fun space to be in. Cute night lights. And I don't know, I'm just really excited about it. And so I thought maybe I would like film a bit of that for YouTube if you guys are interested in me painting the mural for that. I'm not like an incredible painter or anything like that. I mean, I used to, I, I definitely feel like I used to be a better painter and have like a more creative mind. But as you let that stuff kind of go over the years, like you don't, if you don't flex that muscle, if you don't work it out, you kind of lose it. And I've lost it a bit, like my ability to shade. And I used to be like a charcoal artist. I would like do portraits in charcoal and I would paint portraits for people and pictures for people. And I'm not like incredible or anything, but I'm all right. And I've definitely lost a lot of that over the years. So I'm kind of excited to get back into it. I was gonna do wallpaper. I don't know if you guys remember, but I bought this wallpaper from this company called, I can't remember the name of the company, but I bought this wallpaper and I put it all up in his room and it's like this foresty, cute, mushroomy wallpaper. And I got completely done applying it, which was a bitch and have to apply because it is vinyl and it was awful. And then I read about vinyl wallpaper because I could just, it was so hot, so, so thick in scent. They say it's like extremely toxic and cancer causing and stuff like that to breathe in. The VOCs, like the volatile organic compounds or whatever, anyway. I then had a little breakdown and had to rip it all off the walls. <laughs> and I contacted the company and they basically were like, once the smell dissipates, it's really not that bad. And we can give you a 40% discount if you wanna buy something else. And I was like, yeah, you can get fucked is what you can do, <laughs> but thanks. Cause they didn't have that like disclaimer on their website saying like, hey, not really safe to use. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're a baby, developing brains. Anyway, so I just took that down and now decided in his room, I will paint. 
it. That's where we have landed and I'm very excited about it. It's really, really fun for me to do art. Like I was talking about in my video, getting into a flow state. I'm really excited to do art and just have that time to be creative. It really does something for me. It just like gets me into a flow and I can just vibe out. I actually don't listen to music when I'm doing that. I watch The Office. I've already seen it like 150 times. Like I know every word, but it is really nice to be able to just like have that. It's almost like having a friend be there chatting with you and talking in the background while you just get to be creative and artistic. I also got this new little watercolor book. It's like this long and I wanna get like washi tape and put it in there and then like make mini watercolors. I thought that would be a really fun way because sometimes it's a little intimidating to do like a large watercolor and I wanna like learn techniques. And so I figure if I can do like little tiny ones, a little nature scene, little nature scene here and there and just like flip through and you can watch like the progression as the pages go on. I thought that would be really cool. So I got that and maybe you guys would be interested in seeing that one day. I don't know. I'm gonna like copy some tutorials and things like that that I've seen online of people. Um, my Instagram is showing me a lot of pages I don't follow, but they've actually been really cool like art pages. So I really like that. Um, I'm gonna link a video up here. I actually did a video maybe like two, three years ago where I followed a watercolor artist tutorials online and I like did four watercolors and set it all up and it was really fun to do. So if you guys are interested in watching that as well, I don't know, let me know if these kind of videos interest you. I'm naturally sort of leaning towards art, art right now. And uh, I don't know if you guys be interested in watching that, but I would love to film it. And I would love to bring you guys along as I sort of relearn how to do art. My husband also, bless his heart, he bought me the kindest, most insane Christmas gift that you've ever heard of anyone buying anyone. It hasn't arrived yet. I can't believe he did it, but I've been talking about it for years and he's been notating that I'm never going to buy it for myself. And he got it for me and I'm, I like, threw up a little bit, it like, it, I couldn't believe it because I just, I can't believe it. Uh, he bought me a kiln. <laughs> he bought me a kiln and a pottery wheel. What? I can be a potter. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can make pottery. I am, I just can't even believe it. That's like such a dream. And I've always talked about it. I'm like, I really wanna make pottery. I really wanna make pottery. I used to take 3D art courses. I've done 3D art and pottery making in high school, but it was a long time ago. And so I need to get in and take like a local pottery course. I, I just couldn't even believe it. He reached out to this amazing, amazing pottery maker. Um, her handle on Instagram, I believe it was her that he reached out to. It is Wormwood and Honey Pottery. She makes, like he has commissioned some pieces for me and when I tell you, they are the most gorgeous, wonderful, mushroomy, darling, perfection. They're the most amazing. I love them so much. And I drink out of my mug every single morning. And he reached out to her and asked her like what she would recommend. And she sent the most wonderfully long email answering all these questions and being so detailed and kind. And like, that is so wonderful that there are people out there that are so kind like that. And so he was able to get some things based on her recommendation, which I trust because she is literally the most incredible potter ever. I'm so excited, you guys. As I'm learning that, maybe I can film it as well. They haven't arrived yet. There's been some delays and stuff like that with shipping, but I'm very, excited to do pottery. I just can't even believe it. I cannot even believe it. So thank you, Zach. <laughs> it's like the most kind, wonderful gift ever. Oh, I got that already. Townhouse PETA. Okay, well that's it for today's video. And let me know what you guys are interested in seeing. And if any of those videos sound like a vibe, sound like you guys would like watching them, I think either way I shall film them because you know, it's just how life's going and I'm getting excited about it. And you know, like I always say, makeup's just one part of me, but art is the part of my heart. I can't think of another rhyme other than fart, but I'm not gonna do it. It is the part of my heart that I want to share right now because it is the Christy that I've wanted to be that I couldn't do for the longest time because I had too much anxiety, too much depression, too much stuff going on. It's therapy and medication and help and just like, you know, taking shifts and discovering who I am as a person. Like it's now coming back out of me. Whereas I thought like that person was kind of like gone. It's not only not gone, like I feel like I'm yearning to, to do more. So I'm very excited about it. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys like following me along with this very, very simple, but very lovely makeup look. And I uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video. Bye. We need a it's all right. This is starting to look <sighs> impossible ish Candle. I thought I heard dripping water. I was like, no. Oh, my pill is kicking in, thank God. You can get fucked is what you can do. <laughs> Go never bother me anyway.